Hello everyone, my name is Cameron. Welcome back to the channel. And sorry that there was no raids two today. Uh, I didn't get a chance to record it before I left for work. Um, my mom fell. I almost twisted my ankle trying to when I would like got up to go help her. I went back to bed and I was almost late to work, so I did not have time to record Rage 2's voiceover stuff. I'm very sorry, but finally the Clash Champions 2019 review is here. I'm sorry that it's taken three days. I finished Sun. I finished watching the pay per view on Monday, so three days it's taken for me to actually get this recorded. And uploaded to you guys. So here we finally go. Starting with the very first match of the night, we had a cruiserweight championship triple threat. Also, this doesn't work on my my mini fridge, so I still do have to use my knee. However, I don't have to. I can hold it more because I don't have to worry about my my thing falling as much. My laptop. So uh, starting with cruiserweight championship championship triple threat match with the champion Drew Gulak versus Lince Dorado and Humberto Carrillo. Uh, the prediction was Gulak for both Jesse and myself. Uh, Carrillo and Dorado keeping a lot of control in the match. Gulak trying his best to get the control to like actually get some momentum and get control over the match because he's the champion. And for like the f first like 10, 20 minutes of this match, or for the first like five, 10 minutes of this match, he wasn't even in control. Uh, Gulak taking control, but Carrillo starts getting some more momentum. Carrillo dives outside and takes down Dorado off of Gulak's shoulders, which is probably the, the spot of the match for me. Um, seeing Gulak having Dorado on his shoulders, and then Carrillo goes over. I can't remember exactly what move he hit, but it was awesome. Uh, Carrillo gets Gulak in submission, then Dorado gets one on Carrillo. Gulak throws Dorado into Carrillo. Uh, shooting star press avoided by Carrillo. Aztec press hit by him, on, but Gulak stops from covering. Gulak rolls up Dorado for a three count. Gulak wins. One no on predictions, 10 out of 10. This pay-per-view was actually probably one of the best ones of 2019 that we've seen so far, and I went home very happy with it. I'm also going to give you guys some updates on Raw and SmackDown from what I've watched of SmackDown at least. But Raw, I've watched the entirety of Raw. I watched like about half of SmackDown. I've yet to watch NXT. I'm trying to stay spoiler free of it so I can actually watch it when Jesse gets here Friday. Match number two, United States Championship match. AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander. Prediction with Styles for both. I'm going to be honest, this match, while it was still a good match, didn't have a whole lot of spots that I really wrote down about. I was a little bit distracted during this match. A whole lot of my focus wasn't on it. Um, Styles hits Styles Clash outside the ring after a few attempts at finishing the match really early on. Uh, Styles Clash in the ring in the cover. Styles wins 2 and all predictions, 10 out of 10. It was, there wasn't much to say on this match. I mean, we've seen a lot of Cedric and AJ facing off for the past few, like, the past month. So this match was kind of the same cut and dry stuff that we've already seen. The OC came out and they attack Alexander. There were some more big spots. A lot of it was, like, quick finish, trying to go for quick finishes and stuff. Um... There was a magic, I think it was a magic killer into a phenomenal forearm after this match is what happened. Uh, there was also some attacks by the OC on Cedric Alexander. Um, no, there was a match. It was the OC versus Cedric and the Viking Raiders. And after the match, uh, or basically the entirety of the match, Cedric just got his ass beat. And uh, they ended up losing that. The OC ended up winning that match by AJ hitting a phenomenal forearm and pinning uh, Cedric. Match number three, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match. Raw Tag Team match, championship match, apparently, is what I fucking put. <laughs> Raw Tag Team Championship match. Um, Strowman Rollins versus Rude and Ziggler, or as I think they're now known technically, is absolutely glorious. I don't know. Uh, Strowman control over Rude and Ziggler. Seth comes in. They use some double team moves. Famous serve by Ziggler on Seth for a two count. Braun gets tagged in, starts destroying Ziggler and Rude. Rude and Ziggler get in control. A glorious DDT gets reversed. Ziggler, Grain. Ziggler Grins? What? Oh. Ziggler grabs Rollins' leg. Glorious DDT gets reversed. Suicide dive after a sling blade. He misses with a uh, springboard knee, though. Glorious DDT as Strowman is taken down outside. Basically, it was the, I'm going to run this guy at the ropes. Oh, no. He pulled the ropes down and fell. I fell over. Uh, Rude Ziggler win. 3 0 on predictions. 10 out of 10. Uh, Strowman backstage blamed Seth for the loss. Which I think is great storytelling, but have him blame Seth, even though you weren't even in there to try to break up the pin, dickwad. Um, really good match. Uh, Ziggler and Rude had like a tag team summit with a different tag team. I'll, I'll get to that a little bit more later on before Braun Strowman came out and attacked them. Uh, so yeah, match number four, SmackDown Women's Championship match. Bailey versus Charlotte Flair. Prediction was Charlotte Flair for both. Charlotte goes full Cedric Alexander and goes for a quick pin, then ch hits chops on Bailey. Big boot by Charlotte. Bailey being devastated in the match. Uh, Bailey sends her into the exposed turnbuckle and rolls her up. Bailey wins three and one predictions, ten out of ten. 
And as soon as Bailey got the win, she took off, and Charlotte just kind of sat there with like a smile on her face, just like <laughs> I would have done the same fucking thing. Um, so so far, that's all for two at the Charlotte for the people who are from Charlotte, which. There's two more who are from North Carolina, the Revival, that are coming up. Um, but Charlotte and Cedric, who are both from North Carolina, from Charlotte, North Carolina to be specific. I don't think either of the Revival are from Charlotte, but they're both from North Carolina. Um, but both Charlotte and Cedric lost their matches. Match number five, uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, the New Day versus the Revival. Oh, and Charlotte and Sasha had a match. I don't know if I've gotten to the... Yeah, I got to the match on SmackDown between Charlotte and Sasha. I'll cover that later. Uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, the New Day versus the Revival. Prediction was the New Day for both of us. Uh, Dawson tacking the knee, the Revival keeping control of the match. Double teaming Big E as Woods is down outside. Woods comes back up. Him and Dawson both come come in. Wilder gets taken down. Big E gets sent out. Shatter Machine to Big E outside. Shatter Machine to Woods, the Revival deciding to attack his knee more instead of winning the match. Woods taps, the Revival win 10, and 10, 10 out of 10, 3 and 2 on predictions. Uh, the first tag team, who's still a tag team, to win the NXT, Raw, and SmackDown tag titles. And they're from North Carolina and actually won, them, won a match. Uh, and backstage, Alexa Bliss sells out R-Truth, who is pretending to be a boom mic operator. So why I specified first tag team was still together? Because technically the first tag team of people to win both was Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. Slash American Alpha. So they won the NXT tag titles together as American Alpha. They won the SmackDown tag titles together as American Alpha. Then Jason Jordan went to Raw and won the Raw tag team titles with Seth Rollins. Then Chad Gable ended up coming to Raw with and teaming with Robert Roode, where they then won the Raw tag team titles. However, the first team to do it as an actual tag team and not be split up is the Revival winning the NXT twice. The SmackDown Live now once, and I think the Raw Tag Team titles twice. Oh, but they were the other part of that Tag Team Summit um, between or with uh, Rude and Ziggler uh, before Braun Strowman came out and attacked them all, which we'll get on to why he did that later. Um, besides just losing the Tag Team. Like, he lost the Tag Team titles. I'd be pretty pissed too. But yeah. So the Revival and Rude and Ziggler all got attacked. Rude ran off kind of basically let Ziggler get attacked. It's kind of a dick move. Match number six, the Women's Tag Team Championship match, uh, Bliss and Cross versus Fire and Desire. Prediction was Bliss and Cross for both. Bliss was in a Harley Quinn-inspired attire, and then they mentioned Cena and Suicide Squad, because of course they did. Nikki swivels her hips at Manny, and Sony comes in for a while before Lex and Manny are both in for now. Corey Graves had some issues. No. Uh, Corey must be conflicted. Alexa taking down Mandy. Insult to injury. 24-7 championship stuff happens. Bliss tries to roll truth up. Um, almost pinned in. Mandy working the control as Sonya tags in. Uh, double team moves by Fire and Desire keeping Bliss away from her corner. Cross body by Nikki, but Sony kicks out. Fire and Desire taking control. High low. Cross breaks up the pin. Nikki tags in and takes down DeVille. Avoiding a knee from Mandy. Draping neck breaker. Bliss and Cross win. 10 out of 10. 4 and 2 on prediction. They actually had another match against Sasha and Bayley. Uh, on the Raw after Clash Champions uh, that Sasha and Bayley end up winning after Bliss got carted off, basically. I think, I don't know if it's kayfabe injury or if it's like an actual thing they wanted to check out, but she got carted off to the back and it was basically two-on-one from there and Nikki just couldn't handle it and ended up losing. Uh, match number seven, the Air Conal Championship match, Shinsuke, versus, Shinsuke Nakamura versus The Miz. Prediction was The Miz. Sammy murders North Carolina, talks about the Panthers losing, as you do. Uh, Sammy's mic gets shut off, thank God. Miz then throws the mic away, and Jesse, with the best line of the night that I've heard, that I heard, says, and I quote, maybe Miz should be the QB instead of Baker Mayfield. I literally about passed out from laughter because of that. It was the best moment, one of the best moments of the night, just him fucking, like, I didn't realize he said it at first, I was like, wait, did you say what I think you just said? And just started fucking bursting out laughing. It was really fucking funny. If you guys don't know who Baker Mayfield is, he is the QB for the Cleveland Browns. If you don't know who QB is, it is quarterback for football. The Cleveland Browns are a national football team in, or a football team for the NFL in Cleveland, which is in Cleveland, Ohio, which is where the Miz is from. Technically, he's from Parma, Ohio, but close enough. Uh, he's a huge Cleveland fan, and I thought it was really funny that Jesse said that. Um, because Baker Mayfield basically talked a bunch of shit this before the season started, saying, oh yeah, the hype is real, the Browns, we got this, the Browns are coming back, we're going to be amazing. And then they got their asses destroyed in the first game. They did beat the Jets, but the Jets suck, so it's not much of an accomplishment. 
But their first game, they got destroyed. Shinsuke using the yes kicks, but gets caught. Uh, caught, but Nakamura catches him with his other leg. Miz takes out Nakamura's left leg. It hits, starts hitting the yes kicks on Nakamura. Last kick gets avoided, as per usual. Skull Crush and Finale gets avoided. Baseball slide German suplex by Nakamura. Miz gets in the figure four, but Nakamura gets the rope. Rolls up, uh, Shin or rolls up the Miz. Nakamura sets up for the Kinshasa, but gets reversed to the, at, to the Skull Crush and Finale. Sammy distract the, distracts the ref as Miz covers. Miz won at this point. This technically would have been Miz winning had Sammy not distracted the ref. Miz goes after Sammy. Nakamura catches him with a kick. Hits the Kinshasa. Nakamura wins. Four and three on predictions. Ten out of ten. Uh, there will be, and then they announce that there will be a two-night draft on October 11th and the Monday after on Raw. So October 14th. <coughs> so that is one week, basically, a little bit under a week removed. That's like um, three days, five days, five days removed from the Hell on Cell pay-per-view, which will be on October the 6th, um, which is coming up very fast already. Like, that's insane that they're doing it that fast. But October the 6th, will be the Hell in Cell pay-per-view. I think it's because there's going to be a Saudi event in October. That's the only thing I can assume is that they're going to do a Saudi Arabia event at the end of October, and that's why they're going to set that up at October 11th for the draft. So yeah, October 11th and 14th will be a two-night draft. Um, and we'll see where everyone goes. Next, we have the Royal Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch for Sasha Banks. Prediction was Becky Lynch for both. Becky taking it to Sasha immediately. Becky tries to get the disarmored and the match fast. Sasha's taken down outside by baseball slide drop kick. Lynch attacks her outside. Uh, bank statement in on Becky, but Becky fights it off. Beck exploder, leg drop from the second rope. Meteor from up top for a two count. Sasha shifts to the rope as she's in the disarmor. Drop kick to Banks. Uh, drop kick from up top this time, but Banks kicks out. A backstabber, a second, a, then she locks in the bank statement. Becky crawls the rope, but Sasha adjusts, rolls into the ropes. Sasha grabs a chair. She grabs a second and hits Becky. So basically, she slid the chair in to distract the ref. Very Eddie Guerrero like, which she, I think she was actually in her Eddie inspired attire. Um, and then she comes in, hits Becky in the gut with it while the ref is distracted. Two count off of a Shining Wizard. Becky hits the ref by accident with the chair as Sasha ducks down. She attacks Sasha with it after. Disarmor on the railing outside in the crowd. Sasha taps. They work their way all the way up and then all the way through and back down. Basically, the ref was down for this whole time after getting hit in the shoulder with a chair. Um,. Becky destroying Sasha the whole way until Sasha hits her with a shoulder tackle on the apron or into the barricade and starts to take control. Disarmor on the chair, which doesn't really change much. Uh, Sasha taps, refs come out to stop. Becky gets DQ'd for striking officials. Sasha wins 10 out of 10, 4 and 4 on predictions. And then uh, Becky was fined 10 grand for uh, striking an official, even if it was accidental, which she then said she'll pay. She has no problem with that. Uh, this is setting up for a rematch. Between Sasha and Becky at Hell in a Cell inside of Hell in a Cell, um, which I'm very excited for, regardless of who wins. Uh, Sasha talked a bunch of shit, and during the match that she had against Charlotte, um, wait, no. Yeah, during the match she had against Charlotte, Charlotte got a chair after the match because Becky or because Sasha got a chair. So Charlotte grabs a chair to attack Sasha, and then. This actually happened. Let's go back to Raw real quick, too, because this happened on Raw. Becky came out to attack Sasha after the tag team match with a chair. And then Bailey grabbed one. Or she went to go attack Nikki, maybe. I can't remember exactly what happened. But then Bailey grabbed one. So they're both, it's two on one with both of them having chairs and Becky having a chair. And then as they both go to attack, Charlotte comes out. Becky runs to go, or Bailey goes to run to stop Charlotte and gets a big boot to the face. And then it's Becky and Sasha basically like clashing chairs in the ring back and forth um, for a few minutes before chair shots actually start landing. I can't remember if there's any chair attacks on SmackDown or not. I think there was. And then Sasha called out Becky and said, fine, you let's have a rematch at Hell in a Cell. And then I can't stand Sasha's voice, but she was basically making me want to fucking... Died. Made me want to fucking cut my ears off. I hate Sasha's voice. If you guys have ever heard Sasha talk for a lengthy amount of time while watching a pay-per-view or anything, you understand what I'm talking about. Her voice is so nasally and so bad. I don't like it. It's annoying. Match number nine, we have WWE Championship match. Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton. Predictions was Kingston for both. Kofi in control, leading to Randy walking up the ramp a bit to regain his composure. Orton sends Kingston off the apron and the barricade, bounces his head off of the announce table, and then slams him on top of the barricade, suplexes him over it to the mat. 
belly to back on the German announce table. Again, onto the German announce table, back in the ring. Orton takes it to Kofi more, but only gets a two count. Oh, excuse me. Orton attacking Kofi outside more. Kofi reverses the draping DDT, sending Orton over the ropes. Frog splash, crossbody, SOS reverses. Orton goes for a cover and gets a two count. SOS for a two count. RKO out of nowhere after draping DDT for a two count. Sets up for the punt kick, which was insane. It gets reversed into a trouble in paradise. Kingston wins 10 out of 10, 5 and 4 on predictions. Uh, they had a six man tag match on SmackDown between the New Day and then uh, FTRKO, as they're now being known, The Revival and Randy Orton. Um, that Kofi and the New Day won, I believe, after a trouble in paradise to Dawson. It might have been to Orton, I can't remember exactly. But there was a trouble in paradise hit, the New Day won. And then post-match, Brock Lesnar's music hits, so we're all fucking, like, going crazy. Kofi and the New Day... Did I actually break that? No, okay. I didn't actually close that good. Kofi and the New Day sit there, and Kofi says, guys, I got this. Back up. You know, he holds the title up. Paul Heyman comes out, cuts his usual spiel, and talks about Brock Lesnar, talks him up, and then announces... That at the first ever SmackDown, the premiere of SmackDown on Fox, October 4th, Brock Lesnar will be challenging Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. Um, so I don't know who's going to be winning that match. This might be setting up for the New Day to go to Raw. It's possible. It's very possible that New Day are going to be set to go to Raw. And if that's the case, I'm not going to be pissed about it because I really, really like the idea of the New Day back on Raw. Especially if it means... Kofi going for the Universal Championship potentially in the future. Um, but yeah, so it's set up for Brock Lesnar, Kofi Kingston at the first SmackDown on Fox, October 4th. Um, a week after that is the draft. So they set it basically to where every championship, every champion can lose their championship right before the draft. So we kind of only know that champions are going to be staying on their brands most likely. So if, let's say, Kofi loses to Lesnar... It means Kofi and the New Day, since they're not going to be champions at that time, could potentially go to Raw. Meaning Lesnar. I'll put it this way. If Lesnar's actually going to be around every week and he's going to be there every week on SmackDown as champion, I'm fine with it. I don't mind Lesnar being champion. I just don't like that he's gone 90% of the time. But onward to the next match. We have men's no DQ match. Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan. Prediction was Reigns for both. Reigns starts to attack before the match begins. Rowan in control until Roman sidesteps him and Roman and Rowan... Slams into the steel steps. It's going to be a lot of row ending in in. So it's going to be hard for me to like not fuck up. Roman gets a kendo stick but gets hit with the steel steps. And then Rowan tees off on him with the kendo stick. Roman's starting to get the momentum back as he takes the table apart. Roman sends Rowan outside over the top rope. Rowan pulls the mat over the LED board off and slams Roman face first onto it. Followed by a big boot. Samoan drop. Rowan catches Roman off of the Superman punch and power bombs him through the table for a two count. Rowan sends Roman through another table in the arena with the iron claw. You see what I mean? Uh, Rowan grabs the camera jib, but before he can use it, Reigns hits him with a lead pipe and then slams the jib into Rowan, hits him with it again. Superman punch. Sets up for a spear from the top of the stage, but gets hit with a big boot from Luke fucking Harper. Now, really quick, I want to talk about this. Like, seven months ago, Luke Harper announced that he asked for his release. We thought, okay, they're just going to make him sit out his contract and basically do what they did to Neville. However, when this bullshit started two months ago with Roman, Daniel, and Roman, I said, I bet you it's going to lead to Roman being the perpetrator and Luke Harper is going to be the person is going to come back and get involved in it somehow. I said, maybe Luke Harper is going to be the guy that did it. Two months ago, I fucking called it <laughs> that Luke Harper, this is going to be how Luke Harper was going to come back, that he was going to come back during this feud in some way, shape, or form, and I somehow fucking nailed it, and I loved it. They take it to Roman, double-teaming him, Roman wins, 10 out of 10, 5 and 5 on predictions. Jesse and I were both very shocked that Harper came back and attacked Roman. Like, I didn't expect it, Jesse didn't expect it. Two months ago, I made a fucking random bullshit prediction saying, I bet you Harper's gonna come back, I bet you this is how they bring him back at the end of this bullshit he's going to be in some way involved, whether he's the person who did it or he's somehow involved in the scheme with Rowan and Daniel Bryan. It's going to be Luke Harper in this in some way, and I was right. I was very happy that I was right. And finally, match number 11, the Universal Championship match, Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman. Prediction was Rollins for both. 
Seth attacking the knee right from the start. Super kick, another, a third. Frog splash, Strowman immediately kicks out. Curb stomp reverse, Strowman slams him down. Throws him across the ring, and again, Seth sidesteps Braun, sending him into the turnbuckle. Knee, a second, goes up top. Gets caught into a massive punch. Seth dodges Strowman, sending him over the German announce table. Seth goes for a suicide dive, hits it, sending Strowman onto the German announce table, making it collapse, which I thought was pretty funny. Another suicide dive, this time gets caught, and power slam reverse, sending Strowman into the steps. Seth sends him onto the Spanish announce table and heads up top, but Strowman gets up there and sends him down. Strowman goes up top. Superplex gets avoided, splashed by Strowman, hurting his own knee. Seth kicks out at two, stomp after reversing a move from Strowman for one count. A second curb stomp gets a two count. A third, he covers, kicks out at two again, and the ref high fives him accidentally, which I thought was hilarious. He accidentally high fived Braun Strowman when he was counting. It was hilarious. Uh, the fourth stomp gets reversed. Power slam, knee gives out though. Seth hits the pedigree, followed by a fourth curb stomp. Seth wins, 11 out of 10. Six and five out of predict on predictions. This pay-per-view gets a 20 out of 20 on the rating because I loved everything about it. However, that is not it. The lights go out as Seth is on the top at the top of the stage. Sister Abigail Rollins on the stage from The Fiend. He stands there with Seth in his left hand and then hits the mandible claw on him. I am so fucking hyped for that match. And it is official. The Fiend versus Seth Rollins. Hell in a cell for the Universal Championship. I am so excited. Just don't ruin Bray Wyatt, please. Please don't ruin The Fiend. But now that we are done talking about the pay-per-view, we can talk about what happened the Monday Night Raw afterward because I still have some things that we need to talk about on that. So it was in the universe, at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, Tennessee, and Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. Kane, was there, obviously. So during all of that... He ended up becoming 24-7 champion only to lose it to R-Truth later in the night and then they called the truce. So that way, because obviously Kane couldn't handle being a mayor and 24-7 champion. Uh, Seth and The Fiend obviously made their match official. Seth got jumped after a match against Robert Roode later in the night. So it was a 5-on-1 assault. Then he got saved by the big red demon himself, the demon Kane. Then Kane got hit with the mandible claw from The Fiend. Which I thought was awesome. It was a very nice setup. Uh, it was so perfect. It was awesome. I loved it. Uh, what else happened? The King of the Ring was decided and it ended up being Baron Corbin. His coronation is on SmackDown Live. I have yet to watch his coronation, so I don't know how well it went. Uh, Lacey Evans had a match against Dana Brooke, which I mean, it's Lacey Evans versus Dana Brooke. She won via, via the sharpshooter, kind of sending a message to Natty. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about? I haven't watched all SmackDown yet. I haven't watched any of NXT. So I think that's about it. Um, I think there's nothing else new to talk about. I don't think there's any more people who won the 24-7 championship as far as I know on SmackDown. There was no uh, title changes of that at least yet. Um, yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the Clash of Champions 2019 review. I'll see you in the next video. Stay golden. Peace.